This video will cover the beginning of negative exponents. There will actually be another video on negative exponents. We learned in a previous episode that the definition of a negative exponent is this. a to the negative x converts to the fraction 1 over a to the x. The negative exponent converts to a fraction. And when you convert it to the fraction, then this exponent becomes a positive exponent. It's just been relocated to the denominator. So when you see something like x to the negative 2, the directions are going to tell you that all of your exponents need to be positive. So when you see this, you need to immediately change it to 1 over x, same variable, squared, same power, but this time it's positive. Same idea here, 1 over x to the positive 4. These are equal expressions. They are just in a different form. This one has the positive exponent like your directions are going to ask for. You need to be careful when there are coefficients. This negative 2 is only applying to the x. That 5 does not need to be sent anywhere. The 5 is going to stay in the top and the x squared goes to the bottom. And the reason for this is this is really 5 times x to the negative 2. So you could think of that as 5 times 1 over x squared. And it's the 5 times the 1 that gives you the 5. But the easy way to think about it is this. The negative exponent gets sent to the bottom, not the coefficient. This variable right here has a positive power. It's going to stay in the top. But the x to the negative 4 is going to be sent to the bottom. There's a common mistake I see in this kind of problem often. This negative 2 is a coefficient. Coefficients do not go anywhere. Negative 2 stays in the top of the fraction. But the x to the negative 6 goes to the denominator. So the negative exponent gets sent to the bottom, not the coefficient or a variable with a positive exponent. So positive exponents stay up. Coefficients stay up. Negative exponents get sent to the bottom. In a problem like this with multiple variables, some of these variables are going to stay in the top and some are going to go to the bottom. x to the negative 2 is going to go to the denominator. z to the negative 4 needs to be rewritten in the denominator. So that this is going to be written like this. a to the 4th, stay. x to the negative 2 got sent to the bottom. y to the 6th, stay. z to the negative 4 becomes z to the 4th in the bottom. Now, if you have 1 over a negative exponent, we have to be able to deal with that also. Recall what this part here means. x to the negative 2 itself means 1 over x squared. So this one is this, and all I've done is rewrite x to the negative 2 as 1 over x squared. Remember from early arithmetic, 1 over something means division. So this is really the same as 1 divided by 1 over x squared. Recall also from early elementary days that 1 divided by a fraction really becomes a multiplication problem. So we have flipped this fraction and multiplied, and we end up with x squared. Now, this was the reason for this statement. Take a look at these two. This negative exponent in the bottom got sent up to the top and became a positive exponent. So an easy rule is this. Negative exponents in the bottom get sent to the top. We just said a couple minutes ago, negative exponents in the top get sent to the bottom. So here's an easy rule. Fact about negative exponents. They get sent to what I call the opposite ador, where they become positive. Coefficients and positive exponents stay home. What I mean by opposite ador is numerator, denominator. So positive in the bottom, I mean negative in the bottom goes to the top, negative in the top goes to the bottom. So when you look at an expression like this, you need to take it bit by bit. a cubed is a positive exponent. Leave it where it is. But b to the negative 4 is negative. It needs to be sent to the bottom. So there's our a to the third staying. There's our b to the fourth being sent to the bottom. Come down here. c to the third is a positive exponent in the bottom. Leave it. d to the negative 2 is a negative exponent in the bottom. Send it. It's going up to the top. So negative exponents get sent to the opposite. So what really happened here? This b to the negative 4 got sent down here to the bottom. It became b to the positive 4. d to the negative 2 
got sent up to the top. How about that a to the third and b to the fourth? They just stayed exactly where they were because they were positive exponents. The same thing can happen with coefficients. It doesn't matter. They're not going to move anywhere either. So the 5 over 2, stay where they are because they're coefficients. Look at a to the negative 5. It's a negative exponent in the top. Where's it going to go? To the bottom. b to the 7 is a positive exponent in the top. Leave it where it is. c to the negative 2 is a negative exponent in the bottom. It needs to be sent to the top. d to the negative 2 is a negative exponent in the bottom. Send it to the top. That is the same expression, but we've got all positive exponents now. Another one, with 6 over 9, we can also do a little bit of reducing. And notice we've got the same letters here. But before we do the reducing, get rid of your negative exponents. Just make that a habit to get rid of the negative exponents first. So I'm going to rewrite this one as just 6 over 9 stays. The A stay where they were. All I did was send that C to the negative 2 up to the top to become positive. Sent the C to the negative 5 to the bottom to become positive. Now, this is a problem like we had a couple videos ago. This is just our plain old rule. Take your 6 over 9 and reduce it to 2 thirds. Look at your a's. This is where we can think about where are there more. There are more a's in the bottom, so when we subtract 2 from 4, we end up with an a squared that stays in the bottom. Look at your c's. Where are there more? There's more c's in the bottom, so when we subtract 2 from 5, our c to the third will stay in the bottom. So the very beginning, we got rid of the negative exponents by sending these to the opposite place, and then we used our rules like we learned before. Now you may be thinking, that's just way too much shifting things around. Why can't I just use my exponent laws the way they're written? Well, you can. There's a reason I teach it this way, and it has to do with the mistakes students often make with their sign numbers. And it also has to do with some coefficient problems we'll have later on when we have parentheses. But I can do this one for you with the exponent law straight on. When you look at this, you can look at 6 over 9 and you can reduce it to 2 thirds. That's simple. You can look at your a's and think about subtract from the top down. Look at your c's and subtract from the top down. And you will end up with this line. 6 over 9 reduces to 2 thirds. For our a's, subtracting from the top down is a to the 2 minus 4. For the c's, subtracting from the top down is negative 5 minus negative 2. Then we have to deal with the sign numbers, and this is where students often make mistakes. In the other method, we had positive numbers and we didn't have to worry about this. So 2 minus 4, you might want to think about is 2 plus a negative 4. The two negatives in a row here, we need to think about changing both of those to plus. And this is what we end up with. 2 minus 4 gives us negative 2. When we change this to plus plus, negative 5 plus 2 gives us negative 3. We still end up with a negative exponent for an answer, and we can't have that. So now you have to think about changing it to an expression with positive exponents. In other words, move these to the bottom. So this is going to have to go to the bottom, and the c to the negative 3 is going to have to go to the bottom. Getting us the same answer we got using the other method. You just have to decide what method works for you. We'll hit some more negative exponents in the next video.